Welcome to worship. My name is Jen Gibbs. I'm the executive pastor here, and it is so good to be together. If you are worshiping in with us for the first time, either in this room or online, we welcome you. We'd invite you after the service to head back to the Connection Center. We'd like to welcome you personally, answer any questions, and give you a gift. And if you are online and it's your first time, we hope that you would put uh, in the chat, first time. We want to welcome you. We're glad that you're here. Would you do the same at this moment? Would you stand and turn and greet and welcome somebody around you? Good morning. Let's keep standing. Lift our voices and give God praise. Let's give worship for God's goodness and God's mercy. Let's stand together. Of the good day. 
may be seated. Today we observe All Saints Day and remember those in our church who have passed away this year. It is a time to grieve, it is a time to give thanks, it is a time to remember the legacy we've been given that we may pass it on. You'll see a video playing with names of persons. If those persons are in your family or you have known them, we do invite you to stand in honor of their lives and then be seated again. You can do that as many times as those names are known to you. And then at the final slide, if you want to remember anyone you've loved has passed on to glory, we do invite you to stand at that time as well. Pastor Rob and I will be lighting in candles to remember the light of their lives as it's been passed on to us. Let us honor the saints.
Let us pray. Living God, in whom there is no shadow or change, we give you thanks for the gift of life and life eternal. For all the saints we've just remembered, for those who we remember in our own lives so precious to us, we give you thanks for the gifts they've given us, the lessons we've learned, and for their lives that have blessed us. We rejoice for them now as they've passed on to glory and rest from their labor, that all may be well. So as we are mindful of them today, of those who've gone ahead of us, teach us to follow their best example to the best of our ability, to feed the poor in body or spirit, to support and comfort the mourners and the lonely, to encourage the meek and stand with those in crisis, to support those who hunger and thirst, to cherish and learn from the merciful, to be humbled by and stand with the peacemakers now in the Middle East or anywhere and in all times. Let us clearly recognize together as a community what it means to be called the children of God and to know we are to be your saints, rooted in faith, and ones who pass it on. We do that not by our own inclination or strength, by simply knowing the call and the healing holiness of Christ Jesus, who meets us and cherishes us and stands with us and walks with us and who is with us now and forevermore. And all God's people said, we come to this time in our service, we are going to invite the kids to go to their classes. They may meet Sarah, who's in the back, ready to greet them. If you haven't had an opportunity put, to put their tags on them, she can help you there at the back. So if the kids want to go ahead and out, and if you are online with us, take a moment to check out our kids' ministry page on our website. As they make their way... Uh, I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward and wait as we prepare for the offering, but know that you make things possible. Last week we had our ministry fair and, and everything from justice to serving our neighbors and hunger and holiness to grief to, to outreach to growing in faith, all of it was represented as people head out to the parking lot. A mom grabbed her child by the hand and said, Stop, we've got to go back into the ministry fair. We haven't yet signed up to serve. Know that you are impacting lives and inviting in people to service and meeting in this community out of your generosity, and we give you thanks again today. If you'd like to be part of that impact, you can give a gift. Uh, you can do it by, uh, on our website. You can mail or you can put it in the plate as you go by. We do invite our ushers to come forward and take the offering as we look at what's happening this week at St. Luke's. Hello and good morning. Welcome to St. Luke's. I'm Corey. This is Allison. And we are the team leaders for the Thanksgiving outreach at St. Luke's. And we are so excited you're here this morning. For a lot of us, Thanksgiving is a time for family gatherings and feasting around tables with people you love. But many in our community struggle with both. Before you sit down at your own Thanksgiving table, we invite you to help provide a traditional meal for another family. This year, we plan to feed 1,000 people through our Thanksgiving outreach, and we need you to reach our goal. Volunteers are needed during the week leading up to Thanksgiving to donate food items, help with baking, and to carve turkeys. And there are a lot of turkeys. On Thanksgiving Day, we also need volunteers at North Indy to package and deliver meals and volunteers to serve in-person meals downtown Indianapolis at Cathedral Kitchen. For more information and to sign up to volunteer or donate, please visit stlukesumc.com slash Thanksgiving. This coming Saturday, November 11th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., the United Women of Faith are hosting their annual Holiday Bazaar. Come shock the halls of St. Luke's from the 120 juried artisans, featuring a variety of handcrafted goods. 
Be sure to stop in for the famous UWF cinnamon rolls, delicious baked goods, and lunch while shopping. This is a great free event, and maybe you can even cross some of those names off your Christmas gift list. For people who are experiencing grief, especially after the death of a loved one, the holidays can stir up some big emotions. Our care team is hosting a Surviving the Holidays class where you can learn practical holiday survival techniques and discover that hope still exists and that there are people who will walk alongside you during times of sadness. This class is next Sunday, November 12th at 1 p.m. with a $5 fee to cover the book's cost. For more information and to register for the class, visit stlukesumc.com slash events. And finally, November 19th is a big day. The Stewardship Committee would like to invite you to the gratitude brunch that will be served throughout the morning as a thank you for your generosity throughout the year and your pledge commitment to 2024. Also on the 19th, we are looking forward to decorating the halls for Christmas. We take great pride in our beautiful decorations, and it wouldn't happen each year without our amazing volunteers. If you'd like to help, you can sign up at stlukesumc.com slash decorating. Thank you so much for being here today. Make sure you sign in. It lets us know you want to stay connected here. Grab your phone and use the camera app to scan the QR code in the bulletin or click on the link in the online chat, then follow the prompts on your screen. Remember, no matter where you are in your faith journey, you are loved by God and you belong here. Today's scripture is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I hope that image is starting to mean more and more to you as we go through this series on the blessed life, that we are people who've been poured into and then it overflows from us to be a blessing and benefit to others. As we were preparing for this service today, some weeks ago, and talking about the theme, what it means, uh, Pastor Javon said it reminds him of a television show that ran about four seasons a few years ago called uh, Strange Inheritance. And it was about people who uh, found out after a loved one died that they had a unique kind of inheritance left to them. Sometimes things of, of great value like rare collector baseball cards. Uh, somebody discovered they had a Stradivarius violin. Uh, someone had a 1913 nickel worth millions of dollars. And the strange part of it, it's not just the items, it's the fact that people discovered that these things were in their homes already and they didn't realize it. And it raises an interesting thought. What if we all believed that right now in our homes, in our lives, are things of tremendous value? Does that give you a greater sense of gratitude about your life right now? Paul would say that it should, 
Think again about some words he used in the lesson that we heard read just a moment ago. May you have all endurance and patience, joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints and the light. Paul says the reason, one of them at least, we have to be thankful about our lives is that every one of us has received a strange inheritance, an inheritance of the saints. Just exactly what is he talking about? In the Old Testament, the word inheritance was often associated with land, the land of the promised land, such as the time when the people settled it under Joshua. All of the promised land was apportioned to the 12 tribes, which meant that every family, every person inherited land. They had something to pass on to future generations. Paul uses the word inheritance with more of a spiritual meaning. Instead of talking about land, instead of talking about a a worldly possession, he's talking about a spiritual inheritance and that what we receive from our, our saints rather than a portion of land is a portion of God. They literally pass on to us a part of who God is, a portion of God. Now, got to be a little careful here because that does not mean our saints have to be perfect in order to pass on God to us. Our saints were not perfect. They were people. People are imperfect. But God uses imperfect people people to communicate and pass on God's presence we know and experience God through people so not everything we inherited from our saints was necessarily great maybe you inherited from one of your saints a temperamental spirit maybe you inherited a bad habit maybe you inherited a critical spirit or judgmentalism The good news is you don't have to keep it. You can get rid of that part of your inheritance. We don't have a choice as to what we inherit. We have a choice into what we hold on to. This is where that idea of inheritance of land or inheritance of God makes for an important distinction about the way we face life. Because if we, if we focus on the land, if you will, we're really talking about where we are. And that where includes a lot of things. It, it includes what we have in life right now. It includes our relationships. It includes our health. It includes our jobs. And if your where determines your how, your here will never be fully satisfying. Does that make sense? Because our land is transitory. It's temporary. It doesn't last. And at any one point of our here and now, there's something that's not going to be as great as we wish it would be. I mean, our job might be incredible. We might be doing really great at work. But, oh, if this relationship would just come together in my life, it's burdening me. And maybe the relationship comes together, but then we get sick. You know what I mean? There's always going to be something that we go, oh, if this one little piece would come together, then then I'd have everything I need to be satisfied. But when we focus on our portion of God, we don't put as much attention on the gifts as we do the giver. And when we focus on the giver, what we find is right now, right now, my where can be fully satisfying. What did you inherit from your saints? What did you receive from your saints you want to hold on to and you want to keep? This is where All Saints Day speaks into stewardship really well because stewardship begins with gratitude not not what we give not what we can do for other people that's where some people begin with stewardship they jump right to what we're supposed to give and do and that's why some people just dislike stewardship 
But that's not where you start. You start with stewardship, understanding we've all been given to. We are all recipients. We have received blessing. And stewardship is meant to begin in a place where we recognize I'm a blessed person. Because when, when we understand we have a reason to be grateful, it positively shapes the way we live. I read recently about a teacher in the inner city who was becoming frustrated that her students did not want to learn more than they did. They, they just didn't have an appetite to learn, a hunger for it. was taking so much work to get the students to want to learn. And she understood that most of her students came from challenged environments, maybe challenged financially, challenged by the influence of violence, and it, it dampened their hope for the future. And if you don't have hope in the future and that your world can get better, then why try? Well, what, is it, what does it mean to even want to learn if it's not going to improve your situation? So she came up with an idea. She gave assignments to her students to study the names on their schools. Names like Eliza Blaker, for whom IPS School 55 is named. Eliza Blaker, as some of the students who had her name found out, was influenced by her Quaker tradition and her father's social activism as an abolitionist of slavery. She worked to empower the less fortunate. This was no doubt shaped by her own upbringing in which her family was financially challenged and her father died when she was just 15 years old. She grew up to be a pioneer in education in Indianapolis establishing free kindergartens and providing education and social services for the poor. Other students learned about Crispus Attucks. Crispus Attucks was an enslaved person who escaped and became free, went to Boston. With a small group, he confronted British soldiers one day who pulled out their rifles and they shot and killed Crispus Attucks. And that sparked the Boston Massacre, which sparked the American Revolution. He's remembered for his patriotism and his courage. And so when the city of Indianapolis named one of its high schools Thomas Jefferson High School, they said, hey, wait a minute, let's change that name. Let's see if we can better inspire the students who are going to come to this high school. And they named it Crispus Attucks High School. The teacher found that it started to impact the students. They started contributing more in their education. Because when we discover that someone back of us sacrificed for our benefit, it inspires something within us. It gives us a desire. It gets us thinking about what do we have to give back? What can we do for other people? And for people of faith, what we learn is that when you trace it far enough back, you come to the hand of God. And you realize that there is a God who is looking after us, who is aware of us, who wants to take care of us and bless us and that that God will not give up on us. That God is still on the job. This is where gratitude begins to shape our life. It's why Paul called them the saints of the light. We are enabled to share in the inheritance of the saints of the light. Light is a metaphor for God. These saints are people through whom God's light was reflected through their living. A great metaphor for this idea of gratitude is a prism. A prism refracts light. It, it separates and it divides and it sharpens light. And on one side of a, of a, of a prism... The light gets larger. It's multicolored. It, it widens. It goes out. On the other side, it narrows. And so, therefore, things around it are a little bit darker. 
And a prism becomes a good illustration of what gratitude does for you and me. If we look at life through the lens of gratitude, well, life just gets bigger. It gets more colorful. It gets more beautiful. But when we don't have gratitude, light just gets narrow. And things around it get darker. In Kent Millard's book, uh, the, path, the Gratitude Path, he has this wonderful line in it. He writes, what we count, we increase. What we count, we increase. If we count the reasons to be frustrated, disappointed, discouraged, feeling shorted, cheated, well, those feelings are going to increase. And we'll go around looking for reasons to hold on to those feelings, and we'll find them. But if we count blessings, count the good things in our lives, count the unexpected resources that came our way, count the kindnesses that people show to us, then that will increase as well. And we will notice that even more. We will become more aware every day of the reasons for Thanksgiving. Do you ever struggle with discouragement in life? Just getting down? Starting to believe that there really isn't goodness in this world, at least not goodness for you, if you do at all. I want to encourage you to practice a little exercise. Uh, I get a lot of these kinds of little notebooks as gifts, or I get them from organizations, just pages, empty pages, you know. Sometimes they're very nice, they're leather bound. This one came with a pen in it, so it made it really easy. I want you to take one of these and make it your gratitude journal. Try this for a while. Every day, maybe put the date at the top and keep, get into a habit of, of keeping aware every day of what is something you're thankful for. And it might be several things, no matter how little it is. You know, uh, I looked down and noticed a penny on the ground. Wow, <laughs> okay, I'll hold on to that. What, what is anything, anything? You know, somebody called you out of the blue to say, hey, I don't know why I was just thinking of you. You doing okay? Who knows what it might be, but write down, you know, it's good to know someone cares. It's good to know someone's thinking about me. Whatever it is, write it down, and then every month or so, go read your own journal and see what it does to you. See what it does to your discouragement. See what it does to your frustration. I left from this service last week to drive down to North Carolina. My mom is not doing well. My dad passed away in January, so like many of you, that last slide of standing to remember other people, I stood remembering my dad. Well, my mom's going downhill rapidly this year. Um, so my sister had called me Saturday, and I thought, well, I can get down there real quick after church and then drove back on Tuesday. As I was driving back Tuesday, I was listening to a Christian radio station, and I think I was in West Virginia. They have a lot of Christian radio in West Virginia, <laughs> quite a bit. And I was listening to the song, uh, 10,000 Reasons. And at the end of the song, the disc jockey came on, and she said um, the song reminded her of a book she read in high school called 10,000 Reasons to Praise Jesus. And she said that's exactly what the book was. First page, number one reason, number two reason, number, it went to 10,000. She said, if you make it to the end of the book, you're like exhausted. And that's when you learn the author's intent. The author said, if you're kind of weary, then that's sort of the point. That if you've gotten this far, then hopefully by now you understand no matter what's going on in your life, you still have a reason. There's always one more reason to give thanks and if you go far enough, you realize that our greatest reason for giving thanks is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our greatest inheritance. When you think about this business of inheritance, earthly inheritances are not fair. They're not the same. There are some people who inherit masses of wealth from family or friends, and it is easy to be envious of them. 
to look at them and go, oh my goodness, well, sure, if I had their inheritance, life would be easy for me too. But I don't know. I don't know. I've known a lot of families who inherited big wealth and they couldn't even talk to each other. They couldn't even be in relationship with each other because of what the wealth did to them over the years. I, I don't know if, if it is something to envy. But our spiritual inheritance means we do all inherit the same thing. And if you're a person who never received one acre of land in your life, you never had any worth passed on to you in a worldly measurement you never had a good word spoken into your life you didn't have someone to show you love and help pick you up when you fell down you didn't have someone to help you believe in who you are and what you can do in life if you didn't even have that your inheritance in Jesus Christ means you do have someone in the picture who sacrificed for you and laid down his life for you because he believes in you. He loves you. He wants to pick you up. He wants you to know you are worth dying for. And he believes in you. And he forgives you. And he will never, ever, ever turn his back on you. So when you come down in a moment for Holy Communion, and you take the bread and you hold the cup. I want you just to say to yourself, this is my portion of God. This is my portion I'm holding. This is God meeting me right now in my here and now, letting me know he is with me and he loves me. So let us prepare to come and share together in this holy sacrament. That went somewhere. So we remember on this All Saints Sunday the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples to give them a symbol of his very real spiritual presence with them always. He took the bread of the Passover meal, gave thanks to God for it, and then broke it and gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after the supper, he took the cup and again returned thanks to God and gave it to them and said, drink from this, every one of you. For this represents my blood that's poured out for you, for the whole world, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for giving yourself to us and the gifts of bread and cup, may they represent to us the portion of yourself you give to every one of us, a portion that maybe we have experienced, that we've been fortunate to experience through our own saints. But even if we haven't, you offer yourself directly to us here and now. Bless these elements that they would be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for your world the body and blood of Christ demonstrated through love and through action in his name amen as you prepare to come forward today you don't need to be a member of this church or any church just come seeking the love of God in a moment we will serve the servers and they will be at the diagonal aisles we invite you to come up the diagonal aisles, receive the bread and cup, and head back by the sides or the middle. We do invite you today to hold the bread and cup, and then at the end, Pastor Rob will invite you to receive those 
and then provide a blessing of benediction. And so we will serve, and as soon as the servers are ready, the ushers will come dismiss you to receive your portion of God, this gift of grace.
If you still have your elements, you haven't uh, received them yet, we can do this together, recognizing that we are, we are all one people. We receive the same inheritance in Christ, not one before the other, not any too insignificant, all equally important, equally valued. Together, let's receive the body and the blood of Christ. gluten-free can be a little dry. <laughs> Let us stand. May you leave today believing life is good and that you have a reason to be grateful because a blessed life is a grateful life. May God fill you with great gratitude, not for everything that you face in life, but at least grateful for the one who helps you face it and says you never face it alone. So may you go forth in the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and in the awareness, as the book of Hebrews says, that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. All of those names and faces we put before us are with us right now. All of those through the years who have departed this life are with us right now. Their spiritual presence goes with us forevermore. After we leave, if you would like a moment of prayer, Pastor Jen is going to be down here, and you may just appreciate her praying with you about something going on in your life. Take advantage of that before you go home this day and know that God goes with us. Amen.